knowledge. You have so much knowledge, so much insight. I learned so much from you. My viewers learned so much from you. And here we are in 2024. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are wondering when. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, so how are you doing? Well, I'm better now. Um, I, like you, was uh, battling a pretty nasty cold the last few weeks over the holiday season. So it was pretty yes. rough. Uh, Mom and I got up against it, but praise God, he he's carried me and delivered me as he always does. And um, I'm starting to feel a lot better and not a moment too soon, like you said, with the momentum. And, and I appreciate the kind words, but I also want to give a great acknowledgement to the team that it works with me that is too numerous to mention. And they like their anonymity. But I have a great team that provides the information that, that I'm sharing. And I could not do this without God and without them. So I just want to, you know, balance it out that it's it's certainly not all me yes. by any stretch of the imagination. And I always like being with you because it all kind of started with you back in what late 21, 22, if I remember. You and I kind of started this thing, and and who knew it was gonna, you know, get to this right. point. Uh, and your, your viewers are really uh, kind and and uh, truth seekers and and God's truth at that. So it's always a, it's always a pleasure to be on your show. Well, it's a pleasure having you. And uh, one thing I have to say about you, John, I, I always sense that what you're saying, what you're feeling is, you know, from your heart and that mm -hmm. you are hearing from God, you are led by the spirit and um, and you care about people. And that shows that you really, really care about people. You know, so thank you. I, we just appreciate you and your, and your team. <laughs> well, thank you. That means a lot. I remember you said to me a couple of years ago, are you? year and a half ago sometime you said you really put your heart and soul into it i mean and i do because this is this means as much to me almost as the music because we spend so much time and make a concerted effort on this movement because this is a once in a lifetime wealth transfer for god's people the giving people specifically right and we'll never see this again uh, we haven't seen this since the beginning times of joseph several thousand years ago and you know that was a specific area of the world as you know in Egypt and, and the surrounding area of Israel. This is now the entirety of the world. And it's it's literally going to be a fleecing of the wealth of the wicked to the right. So we're in a very uh, critical place right now where we need we need calm, cogent truth that comes from the Lord, not chaos and panic, because we're going to see enough of that this year with what's going on in the news cycle and financially and politically. It's it's like Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst and we're we're getting to back to your your when i think we're we're coming to our breaking point in music we call it tension release like if you're listening to a piece of music and it starts to crescendo you hear the height and then it drops back down i think that's kind of we're coming to that place so we're not there yet but we're we're getting mighty close we'll say that much well what what i love about you um is that you never you never give dates you you never say well this is going to happen on this date or you know because I yeah. do hear like other podcasters doing that, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I learned from the, the key thing, you know, Denise in life, I'm sure you taught your kids this is if you must if you make a mistake, that's fine. But just learn from your mistakes. Don't keep, you know, repeating them. And it was February of 2019. I really honestly, from my heart, believed that was going to be the time the reset was going to happen. And I put it out there and I was wrong. And I had to, you know, eat some humble pie and it wasn't fun. And then I learned that, hey, God's like, you know, I know you meant well, but this is my timing. This is my event. It will happen when I say it's ready to happen and not a moment sooner or a moment later. Right. And you learn from that. And I just said, you know what? No more dates, no more rates. Because right. honestly, nobody has control over that stuff. You really don't. You know, instead of worrying about the dates and the rates, what I try to encourage my, my followers and just people I talk to is focus on what your plan's going to be when this happens. Because if you're so preoccupied and uh, obsessed with dates and rates and, and fixated on that, then when it happens, if you don't have a, a plan to act, then what you do then? You're like, okay, now what? And you need to be ready to hit the ground running when this does happen. So I think that's more important than, than all the other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the last time we we spoke, we did mention bricks, and and some of my viewers are like, "What is bricks?" Um, I, I'm just going to give a quick summary, and I want you to add on to it that in 2006, it's Brazil, sure. Russia, India, and China created brick. 
the South Africa. Right, the, the Brick Africa. Group. And then, well, that the was South the Africa. Brick. That was the Brick without the S. And then sure. when South Africa joined in 2010, then that became BRICS. And so uh, right. now here we are, we have Iran, right? Uh, mm -hmm. we, we've got Egypt, Saudi Arabia, yeah. now joining um, Iraq, BRICS. Right? Iraq is getting ready to join here at some point. Uh, I think there's 40 nations Putin is galvanizing to join BRICS. Um, and it's a lot of South American countries. It's a lot of African countries. So you're going to see smatterings of countries continue to enter the fold as this thing picks up right now so for those that never heard of BRICS, can you explain what is this group so this group is pulling away from the, mm -hmm. the you know the dollar can you sure. go into detail yeah. about what BRICS really is okay BRICS, BRICS is a coalition that's been in the works for decades um it's like you said brazil russia india china south africa and there's a lot of countries within those you know um letterings or an anagram of, of the word. Uh, and, and, you know, Trump, President Trump has been, you know, working with Xi and Putin and Modi for, as we know, from, for quite some time throughout his first term when he was going around the world and making yes. uh, deals with countries and countries were, you know, basically uh, capitulating to President Trump and turning it over to him, you know, the, the soccer ball with Putin and the sword dance with Shinzo Abe in Japan and, uh, yes, you know, with Modi and, and Vietnam. And, and that was all part of a greater plan for this coalition to formulate the BRICS. So it's a, a concerted group. It's part of what's called an East-West reset. So the wealth, the wealth of the Western, the deep state, parliament, the Vatican, D.C. is being fleeced away. And these countries are ostensibly they're de-dollarizing because they hate the dollar and they hate the U.S.'s control on them. And, and I can't blame them. And they're tired of being stronghold, of being, of being a stronghold or a pawn for, you know, the, the cabal mafia. And so they're breaking away from the dollar and they are going into a asset backed economy in the new digital economic reality where all these countries will be able to sustain on whatever the assets they produce in the ground, whether that's gold or silver or wheat or right. crops or produce or Oil. plutonium. You know, I think we discussed this before, but one of the unsung things that Iraq has, Denise, is phosphorus. They have the largest amount of phosphorus in the world. So anytime you use it, it's coming from Iraq. Um, let me think. Uh, Vietnam and Indonesia comprise roughly 60 percent of the world's cinnamon supply. So if really? you go to Trader Joe's or Sprouts, you'll see it on the label. That's how I learned it. And then I just did mm. a little basic research and I was like, wow, okay. So I had to learn some stuff, which is good about that too, little did you know tidbit. So that's just a prime example of some of the products that these countries produce that is going to allow them to um, cut off the tentacles of the U.S. dollar and allow them to be self-sustaining. So that's what BRICS is designed to do. Short term, it's really good for Americans who are invested in these foreign currencies. Long term, it's unfortunately part of Agenda 2030. So it's why I always implore people to become your own central bank, investing in the currencies, investing in metals, investing in the right cryptos, investing in certain bonds we've talked about, owning your own land, growing your own food, having a water source, becoming a self-sufficient post RV as you possibly can getting out of the major cities. You and I have talked about that, you know, cause you're in New York and right. I'm getting out of California. You want to be away from the smart cities that they're trying to create. You know, something I, I kind of dawned on me, we kind of take it for granted, but we've been all using Uber for what's like Uber's been around like what, 10 years or something, maybe somewhere like that. Right. Sure. But do you, do you know the principle of why they started Uber? No. Well, initially it was to, to compete with cabs. That was what they told people and to help create different job sectors. But ultimately, it's part of a bigger arrangement, I found out, as part of the smart city initiative. Because the cabal wants you to live in a smart city. You eat what they tell you to eat. You live where they tell you to live, how they, li how they tell you to live. You right. don't have any transportation. You will own nothing. And then Uber eat, will eat insects, right? Eat bugs and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, yeah and make you sick and weak and non-resistant to their agenda and making it convenient to your death. But Uber would be one of the main forms of transportation they would contract to get you in and around the city, but never leaving the city. 15 minute city. Right. You've heard of that, right? It's 15 minute city. Yep. They don't want you to yep. go. Yeah. 
without more than 15, 15 minutes, minutes, 15 minutes away from you. Correct. Home. And in New York, yeah. that's not hard. In New York, that's not hard to do. So, right. But that's offensively right. what the what the BRICS represents and the threat that it poses to the dollar. Right. And okay, so for those listening, uh, yes, you can purchase. Um, foreign currencies because they will eventually reval, mm -hmm. right? We're going to talk about the reval. Um, but before you, before you do that, if anyone wants to purchase Zimbons, uh, Dong, Dinar, or any of the other currencies that are available, there's going to be a link in the description under this video. So check that out. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about the uh, revals of these uh, foreign currencies? Sure. Anything specific you want to know? Uh, do you see any of them starting to reval anytime soon? Because oh, yeah. We haven't, I mean, we haven't seen any reval yet, have we? No. Um, okay. Iraq, well, what we're looking for is actually, Denise, a reinstatement because <clears throat> Iraq and Vietnam have already revalued years ago. In the 1940s, Iraq was at $4.07. Vietnam in 1986 was, I think, roughly $2.86 to the, to the dollar. So they've been here before. It's just been a long time. Uh, when Saddam Hussein was a kid in the 50s, was up as high as five. So this has happened before, like we discussed in previous shows. But basically, okay. Sudani, the prime minister, is um, met with Davos last week um, and the World Economic Forum, which are the bad guys. But <clears throat> right. what's, it, what's interesting is he had 57 meetings with different companies, all to tell them that just like he did at the UN in last September, I mean, you're in my old stomping ground, your neck of the woods, New York, and uh, yeah. over on yeah. the east side, he told them, hey, we're coming back to international stage. So this is a reprise event of that. It's the first time that since I've been in this, and I think in quite some time that Iraq has been a Davos. So it's pretty significant. You know, mm -hmm. he's not there for skiing, I can tell you that. Right. And, you know, Kim Clement said, I was talking about this on Nick's show today, Kim Clement said, uh, nothing, 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 something. And the way I look at it is this is the fourth prime minister that Iraq has had in the last five years, I think, four or five years. So they've turned them over pretty quickly. They had, you know, they had Dr. Shabibi. They had a body about in 2019. He had promised the people that he was going to return the wealth. He was going to give his life up for it. He's still working with the people in the streets now because he feels badly that he didn't fulfill his, 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 um, his purpose and his promise to them. So he's trying to make good on it in some shape or form on the, on the back end. Then you had Mustafa Kadimi uh, a couple of years ago, and now you have Sudani, who actually is keeping his word. He's got all the reforms, the taxes and tariffs, the oil and gas law. Uh, the Kurds really did themselves a disservice because in this new three-year budget, they got kind of kicked out of the deal. If they had fought for it more, they, they would have gotten a greater percentage than what they're going to get. Uh, so they're they're kicking themselves trying to get back into the game to give themselves better sense. The Kurds are a faction in Iraq, by the way. There's different groups okay. like the Shiites, the Sunnis. But the Kurds mm -hmm. are the largest group per capita, have the best voting power and the most one of the most uh, oil rich areas to produce. That's what gives them some uh, clout over there as far as that. But anyway, the point is that you have Sudani lobbying to the world. They've got this stuff all signed and ready to go in the background. You have Maliki, who is an Obama holdover for 2010. He, mm -hmm. he all the, the governance in Iraq right now, not unlike here, are all corrupt. Iraq, 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 excuse me, Iranian proxies of basically puppets yeah. put in, in in Baghdad's parliament in what they call the green zone. That's where the opulent areas are and the governance and the capital buildings and all that kind of stuff. And when this stuff goes live, they're going to go absolutely nuts and try to stop it like they did under Dr. Shabibi in 2010, just to give a, a kind of a cursory lesson to those who may not know. And then we just added 1,500 troops to U.S. to the roughly 2,500 that we had as sort of redundancy and training contractors and the like over in Iraq. And they're saying it's for war preparations, but that's not true. That's for when this stuff, when we're about to reinstate in Iraq. Uh, they're going to go nuts and try to stop it. Then our military can come in and GI Joe and pull the bad guys out. And that's, the, that's what a body is preparing a lot of the citizens for in terms of morale. So to answer a long winded answer to your question is, is <clears throat> we're looking for the grave surrender. What we're looking for is for Iran 
to have a continuation to create problems in the Red Sea and the Strait of Hormuz. We've heard about the Black Swan event. In my, my what is the Black Swan event? event? The Black Swan event is something where if you look at a series of swans at a lake, a black swan is an anomaly, something that you would not see ordinarily, a right. um, an anomaly, right. you could say, basically, a, or a unique or, or a very, an, an, a, sta a stick out like a sore thumb kind of thing, right? right? Or like right. the orange frog in a green pad of frogs. So it's, a, it's typically an event that triggers everything else. Some people believe it's a geopolitical event. Some people believe it's a financial event. We believe that it's a combination of both. And I'll explain. We believe that Iran's involvement, which is all staged and in the script of this whole matrix, this movie we're in, like it or not, it's all been you know preempted. Um, Iran is going to start inflaming things in the Red Sea. Just last week, the Jordanian and Pakistani government fired missiles into Iran. And that's part of a false flag event to get this thing kicked off. The U.S. deep state desperately needs a war, but they're not going to get it. So what they need is a narrative or a cover story to explain away this economic happening. They always right. have to have a scapegoat. So like Iran's going to play yes. like Vietnam. Right. Yes. And, Iran, and, and historically, you know, Vietnam's going to come back in this. We'll touch on that in a minute. Good point. So what we see happening is now Iran's playing their part in this. They're going to inflame things in the Red Sea and the Strait of Hormuz. That's going to cut off the Black Swan event, we believe, is supply chain and the oil, because <clears throat> they have all these supplies that they ship over here that we use regularly, right. including phosphorus. And then oil, which we know, obviously, that's a well-covered territory. So right. when that happens, you're going to see oil spike to about 150 to 200 barrels. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's going to, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. And it's going to continue. Wow. Well, what they do, they've been shorting oil just like they've been shorting um, gold and silver. It's the same process, trying to, you know, suppress it down. Yeah. That's the lid, the lid, like a pressure cooker is going to pop off. They can't do it anymore. It's, 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 be, it's, it's gone by, past the point of no return. So you're going to see uh, all that happen and everything's going to go haywire. Then Israel will bomb the secret nuclear power plants of Iran. You're going to see all this chaos in the Middle East. Our eyes are going to come off of Iraq. They're going to say the World War III and the world is ending and all this hyperbolic drama that they want to create. This is all purpose. before the elections? We're saying that this oh, is this yeah, year? Well, I don't even know if there's going to be elections, to be honest with you. <laughs> I can't see. We we know that. We know that. Uh, I mean, it? we need 47. <laughs> we need well, him. Prince Andrew, he's, he's there. Prince Andrew uh, is supposed to be taking over the throne due to medical illnesses, right? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, not Prince Andrew, Prince Philip. I'm sorry. I don't know why. Prince right. Philip is supposed to take over for his father due to right. undisclosed medical illness. What might we see as well? The Pope stepping down as well. And then we also have the Biden, which I'm watching between now and the end of February to have an undisclosed medical illness. So they're going to use that narrative yes. as their prop I see that too. to explain mm -hmm. away all these these big structural changes geopolitically that are happening throughout the big three, the Vatican, Parliament, and D.C. They're all interconnected. So right. this is going to happen well before the elections. Yes, I, I think this is going to happen in sometime in the first quarter that we're in. And then they're going to say all this gas and poisonous chemicals are in the air, and it's going to kill the food supply and the water, and the people are going to die. And then Iraq's going to get new panicked. the virus, our, too? Right. Iraq's going to get panicked and reinstate them. And okay. then when things seem at their worst, God will free his people, just like Kim Clement rightly said. What else right. Kim Clement say? The earth will shake and shake again. Haven't we seen earthquakes throughout the world? Yes, yes. Yeah. It was Indonesia. That's going to be a continuation throughout the year. Yeah. So, yes, I think we'll see wow. Iraq be the first one. Then I think we'll see Vietnam because of China, Taiwan. The China Taiwan right. event is Chi on the Republic side, working on the good side with the good guys to free up Vietnam enough out of communism so that they can break free in their dong in silver and Litecoin. Most people don't know that, but that's a big, a big resource Litecoin. for them. So, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they're, they, they stand to gain considerably from the momentum. So I would see Iraq, then Vietnam, and then it'll just be a succession of other countries coming out as we go along. Wow. Okay. So besides the foreign currencies, we can get Litecoin. Yeah. Right. And yeah, Bitcoin. 
I mean, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I think, is coming down now, so we could afford it, but it's going to go back well, up. Well, I would wait on Bitcoin because Trump is now saying that he's not going to support CBDCs, but he will support altcoins and Bitcoin, which is a big tell. So I would wait till Bitcoin goes down. It, I think it's going to go down to somewhere between 32 and 38. Okay. And then at some point it's going to drop like significantly. And because when this stuff happens, we just talked about with Israel, you're going to see the markets just plummet. It's going to be about a 50 percent correction. They call that a flash crash. And you're all going to, also going to see the dollar index take a major correction, too, because you can't have an artificial dollar at 105 or 110 or whatever on the index and these currencies come in and be able to do what they need to do. The dollar has to step back for this nice. to happen. So that's going to happen. And then um, <clears throat> so we're going to see a big stock market crash. I, we'll see. A, we'll see. If, I would say we'll see a 50 percent flash crash is what I would say. So it won't be as big as 2008. You think this year? I don't think so. Maybe next year. OK. okay. Maybe by next year. It's going to it's all going to have to come down. But I think that their goal is to take it down in stages, you know, because it's it's if you did a 90 percent correction, I mean, it's already going to be bad this year. I mean, God's people are going to have the wealth. But what are we going to be living in? Chaos and panic and right. tumult. That's why you want to get your own land, grow your own food, get out of the major cities, have metals, right. have cash on hand for a time, do bartering like we talked about. Um mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this for opulence. I'm, this is now more about practical safety is private jets, you know, private planes to get around. You don't want to be flying commercially anymore. I just did it. It's it's a nightmare out there. I mean, it's you can't believe how bad it is to fly right now. And it's going to get worse because I mean, I remember how bad it was when they were forcing masks. I mean, that was insane. Um, yeah. yeah, I know. I, was, and I know. I, was I, I think they want, to, they want to do that again. But go ahead. They're not going to they're not going to be able to get away with that again. There's, there's, there's too much. They, people know that the whole COVID thing was bogus. Most people, and um, they're and not. You gonna, say not that, gonna... and I believe that, but you wouldn't believe how many people I see wearing masks now. Well, that's voluntarily. What, that's because, <laughs> well, that's because they've been brainwashed and conditioned to. I mean, but those right. are people. That are, those are people that watch the mainstream, that are fear-based, that mm -hmm. are under the brainwashing mind control agenda. Yeah, they won't. Have to, that's my point, Denise. They won't have to force it because some people will just do it voluntarily. I was on the plane in December going to mom in Florida and they, there was, I mean, it wasn't a lot, but there were people that were muzzled up voluntarily. They're not going to have to even bother. People will just choose to do it, but they, they won't be able to force it anymore because uh, you also look at Texas as an example. They're going to lead the way in March. They have legislation to be the country's first gold succeed. back. Token. I think they are going to secede at some point. Yeah, they've actually applied to join the BRICS too. So that might take till next year, but they're already in the application process. So yeah, they're going to secede away. And then I think there's 25 to 30 states, Denise, that once Texas gets the gold back as digital asset coin token in circulation, they'll, I think that a lot of other a lot of red states will follow. So yeah, I think I what, Trump, that what President Trump did brilliantly during COVID is he baked the IRS into the Treasury, and then he allowed all the states the autonomy constitutionally to secede away from the Union. I think that among the many strengths he had, that was one of the most brilliant moves he did. He, he, he used a shutdown to shut down the corporation to his advantage during the downtime. Mm. It's all good. I mean, it's, it's not going to seem like it's good. We're going to go through some really hard times. But you know what? <laughs> Yeah. When you have God on your side, like, you know, who could be against us? We, we will. He'll get us through it. He'll put a covering over us and he'll give us yeah. peace to go through anything we have to go through. I always say that. And I say it because sure. it's it's true in my life. No matter what's Absolutely. going on, crazy stuff, you know, I could worry about it. I could be fearful or I could just trust him. And then I get that that peace over me, you know, so he'll, he'll give us that peace no matter what Faith it is we have to go through. Faith over fear, Philippians 4, 7 through 8. He will give you the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Do we have more time or how, how are uh, we doing on time? About, what, 10 minutes, I think. 10. I don't okay. Know. I, so because this is, you know, I'm going to be airing this on, you know, uh, my TV channel in New York. Sure. If you can, <laughs> in five minutes or less, uh, if you could just talk about <laughs> how we are under this 
you know, a false second, you know, um, constitution. Can, can you talk about that? Because a lot of people don't know that, you know, they created a yeah. second constitution, right? Yeah. I mean, was, it 18, right. was it 1871 or? Right. Trump revised the original Constitution to come up to modern right. standards. Spoken like a true New Yorker. Give me 100 pages of facts in two minutes. Hurry up, chief. Come on. Do, right. 500 on, times I will not speak in class. <laughs> come on, top guy. I got a, I got a cap. Come on. Get, get come to on. it, they, Louis. They, they trained us since we were kids. How many times we had to write? I will not talk in class. But um, I think I think kidding a lot of New Yorkers were potty trained at gunpoint because you guys operate <laughs> with a whole different speed than the rest of us. I mean, my goodness. Well, we have the original Constitution, but I think it was the Act of 18. Was 1871? Is that what I, it was? 1871 was when we were last a constitutional republic. So right. what Trump did when he shut in COVID during COVID, he um, he revised the Constitution up to you know modern standards. But he is when he comes back in optically because he's commander in chief right now, the military, when he comes back optically, he's coming in as the 19th president under the Constitutional Republic. We have been a corporation since 1871. So yes. you are only a citizen if you live in the D.C. area. Ninety five percent of people that live there are citizens because people come there from out of town and you know transplants like any place, major city. Um <clears throat> So, for example, taxes are voluntary. People don't know that. I'm not everybody knows that. Um, you don't make privileged income. You live off the sweat of your brow. The Bible says you cannot tax a man or woman off the sweat of their brow. Um, right. You don't live in D.C., so you're not a citizen, and you don't work for the government unless you're a, a you know, government official or you know, you serve an office in some capacity. You have no ties to them. In fact, taxes were designed in the early 1920s during prohibition in Puerto Rico. It was supposed to be an excise tax um, on alcohol, tobacco and firearms. And they found out that it worked so well, they just kept implementing it because they can only do it by consent. That's why they always have to ask you, do you understand or do you consent? And so people yes. need to take their power back and realize that um, they are not slaves to the corporation. They are under. They are, they are protected through the Constitution in all of its dealings. You know, Bill of Rights and so forth. Right. But they have the ability to be free. Second Second Amendment right to bear arms. That people can have the same munitions that the military. Same grade the military has. Same weapons. Same uh, bullets, right. weapons, ammunition. All the same stuff. So we have we have abdicated a lot of our rights for privileges. That's why the corporation, you got to pay attention to words. There's a difference, Denise, between legal and lawful, right? Between rights and privileges. They use words against us, and they've been doing that for so long because we don't know our Constitution. That's, that's why the forefathers fought so hard to create it and protect it. So we're, we're going through a transitionary phase right now in America. We have parallel presidents, parallel economies, parallel uh, social systems, like I said, corporation and constitution, right? right? And good and evil is its own parallel. And what we're seeing is a phase out or a switch over from the old to the new. And we are going on a digital asset backed economic reality, right? The real assets which control, we won't need central banks anymore. That's what President Trump is already moving us from auditing the Fed because the gold is not at Fort Knox. A lot of it actually is we were estimated to have 8,800 tons of it. I think a lot of it, more than people realize, is, is in the Grand Canyon. They have what's called plaster gold. I think we talked about that before. It's 24 karat gold in sheets, like sheetrock or papyrus. You can really? pull it off the walls. Presidents have tried to get in there, and they, they can't get access to it. Former president. Wow. So, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why it's so heavily guarded. If you go down the Grand Canyon, they have security all around the bottom of the hill. It's for that reason. I always knew something was up, and then I found out years later, about this uh, plaster gold on the, I think X-22 had a spotlight show. One of his guests talked about that. And I started oh, to research. Oh, that's why. Start, you know, the pieces start coming together. So, you know, Javier Malay at Davos, the president of Argentina, um, they, in was it November, December, I think it was December, they devalued their currency by 50% because they're going to destroy it and rebuild it. He went into the belly of the beast at Davos last week and said socialism is, socialism is a failed experiment everywhere it's tried. And we are in the greatest economic time in history starting now. 
So I think Trump is working with him in some capacity. My gut tells me, I don't know for sure, but I suspect he's working with him to get these countries to kind of get his message out. Another example would be Nelson Chamisa of Zimbabwe, a very mm -hmm. ardent Christian who came out uh, recently and said that Zimbabwe is the breadbasket to the world, that we are going to return to a gold standard as a God honoring, really? fearing country. So they have Zimbabwe a lot of gold, right? Zimbabwe? Most in the world. They have the most in the world. Trillions and trillions of tons above and 132 metric tons below the surface. They weren't able to get to it because of all the corruption and the, the military mafia and the infighting that's going on there. But they're taking steps now to restabilize their Zim bonds and the Zim dollars. People think they went out of circulation, but they don't understand that it's all been staged for this moment where these we're going to have suddenly moments where where uh, these forgotten currencies or bonds are going to rise from the ashes. And, and a lot of people are underestimating the power of God and what he's going to do to restore his people because he sees the injustice globally and he will not stand for it anymore and he will not be mocked. And the little tip I was going to give you, other than the supply chain, here's a tip for your, for your guests. You're the first person I've said this on, so this is exclusive for you. Um, I would be watching for, I would recommend to pray about first of all, and consider okay. investing. If, if you have Dinar and Dong and Zim and Yes, the Boulevard and the Thai Bot and other currencies, I would be looking at a wild, a dark horse or wild card, the uh, Lebanese pound. That's a big one. Tw at the end of 2022, they took a 90% devaluation, a major devastating hit for that country. Wow, that's but huge. They're gonna, so they're going to come back. So the Lebanese pound would be one I'd watch. And also... The Iranian, they call it the Toman in country. We call it the real outside country. Yes, there's sanctions on it right now. But I believe once Iraq is freed up, um, Iran's going to do everything they can to get freed up as well by playing ball in this. So Iraq's going to have three years of peace and prosperity because they have a three-year budget, 23 to 26. And then I think Ar Iran's going to come back in and, and take over again. So there's going to be a respite. Just like here in America, I believe that we have about conservatively, a give or take about a, you know, roughly a six year window of peace and prosperity before they try to usher in agenda 2030. So people need to, Christians especially, need to take advantage of this, get out of the major cities, build their storehouses, you know, um, have passive income that, you know, streams of income, residual income for me, that'll be music as an example. Right. Um, but do, do the passions that are on their heart. If you're going to go in the missionary field, do you want to uh, build large pieces of land and do homeless restoration, you know, bring homeless people and, and build them homes and food. And like Kim Clement said, feed the poor, the lonely, the sick, the hungry, the needy. Or maybe you want to build homeless shelters or just build homes for the homeless. They won't need shelters anymore. Sure. Come in. Sure. You know, my project in Tennessee, which is a sex trafficking restoration and a healing center uh, for men and women and children who have been victimized for most of their life to help them reacclimate in society, to heal, to have clean water, clean food, knowing the source of it, heirloom seeds. We're going to have an equestrian farm on there. Horses are very good for therapy, as most people know. Um, that wasn't my idea, by the way. That was a good friend of mine, Ali, who saw a vision from the Lord four years ago, and she said she gave it to me during the lockdown. And I watched the video and I said, what am I going to do with this? This is you know, 4,000 acres. It's too big for me. And God said, it's not about you. It's about me and what I want to do. And I said, okay, what do you want to do? And God said, I'll tell you in due course. And it took a couple of years. And then I started to realize this is going to be a safe haven, right? And all the things, there might be natural mineral, minerals on there, natural gas, oil, what have you. So you want to be as self-sufficient as you can possibly be and get off their system and God is opening up a portal during this time for his people to take advantage of it that I have eyes to see and ears to hear. Yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. I mean, your heart is just coming through. I mean, have you looked at locations yet or do you know you have in um, mind any locations where you want to have this? Well, yeah. I mean, I have a dear friend who's really family, Nancy. I, I'm a, she's one of the team members. I'll protect her last name. But she stayed with me for the last 14 years when I thought I was moving to Tennessee and years prior, um, she's been a faithful bond servant and a wonderful person like you. You'll, you'll get to meet her at some point. Um, she is going to represent me on all the real estate properties. So we're going to buy land 
then I'm going to build a compound. I think we talked about this nice. and a music studio and grow food nice. and eventually get married and have a family and, and all of that. <clears throat> and then by the grace of God, this other property I was alluding to is in the same area in Franklin, Tennessee, which is middle Tennessee. It's, it's about 20 to 25 minutes south of Nashville. So it's perfect for me because Great when I want to go in the city, I can. And when I don't, for I don't have a musician. To. I know. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, for networking and playing and going out for dinner and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, if I want to get the city, I'm living in New York and L.A., I can get a little taste of that. But then when I've had my fill, I can just come home and it's not this long trek like in New York. If you want to, you know, I used to live in um, Bergenfield, which is, you know, is Bergen County, North Jersey. To get over the GWB from the west side can take a while. And it's only, uh, it's only a couple miles away, but it feels like an eternity. But over there, it's totally doable. So to your question... It would all yeah. be in the same area. It would probably, the, the property I was alluding to will probably be about 15, 20 minutes from where my home will be. So it's easy. It's nice. easy access if I want to go there or go to the city. I, it's equally distant. Nice. You, you would never want to come back this way. Now they're going to have no. congestion pricing. They're no. going to charge you just to drive into the city. It's like yeah. insane. No. It's insane. No, you don't want to drive into the city? Well, then you're going to pay more for, you know, Uber or. You know, yeah, you want to, you want to breathe. Just, we, and we and then the buses, the, yeah, the, the bus fares are going to go up. Everything's yes. going to go up. It's like I, they're pushing us out. They're pushing us out of the city. I had, you know me, I lived 10 plus years in the city from 98 to 08. I had my fill. I got out. I got out about a week before the Lehman Brothers incident happened when people were throwing themselves off buildings. So, and after, you know, you went through 9-11, so did I. We saw enough of that. I was like, I can't do this anymore. So, yeah, I, I, my heart goes out to a lot of New Yorkers that are stuck in that like you. And, and you know, yeah. I pray that you will be getting out of there in short order. Yeah. Uh, the UK and The Guardian posted 47,000 companies going out of business. Last week alone, the iconic publication of Sports Illustrated fired their entire staff through email. Think of that. That's huge. Through email. That's how they found out that they were out of through, a job? Through email. They found out they weren't even told. They were just sacked through an email. And then Macy's, we all know the May company, you know, the Thanksgiving parade, the tried and true iconic parade. They rejected a $5.8 billion bid to, uh, to do a buyout. So they're going to, they're going to be, I would be watching February to March, excuse me, February to April. I think Macy's and a lot of other big name companies are just going to close their doors. You're going to see them go down. Wow. We're going to see things that we never thought we mm -hmm. would see. Yeah. This is the year of shock and awe, the wheat from the tares, and vindication. So if people have been waiting for justice, they've been waiting for um, the truth, they've been waiting for their break, this is the year that you're going to get breakthrough. I can tell you that. I don't get all into the dates, but look at how yeah. the year has started already. That should tell you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Israel, what, what part is, you know, where do you see them headed? Well... You know, Israel's a touchy subject because, you know, it's it's God's holy land, but there's there's the true Jews and then there's the Kassarian Mafia Jews. And it's right. just like China. There's a CCP and there's a republic. Again, there's a duality thing going again. Right. It's um, not the people, it's the right. government. Of course, it always is. It always is. Right. And that's sadly, Tel Aviv is one of the largest um, sex trafficking areas in the world. It has the most amount of sex of registered sex offenders per capita in the world. So I think Israel is going to have a spotlight on the corruption this year with Netanyahu and the corruption of the government. I think that eventually the true Jews there uh, will be freed and will have their opportunity to you know break out. But unfortunately, they're going to have to go what we're going through and go through the um, through the transition, for lack of a better word. Right. Wow. Well, John, wow. That we, we covered a lot of things. Thank, thank you for all of that. And wow, it's just the beginning of the year. I mean, my gosh, so much is going to be coming our way. But uh, as always, it's great having you on. And um, I'm going to ask you, like I always do, if you can just close us out in prayer. Absolutely. That'd be my honor. <clears throat> thank you. Well, precious Abba, Father, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Son of, the living, Son of the living God, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come to you this evening with thanks and praise. Thank you for this platform to be able to share your truth, to share the gospel. Thank you for Denise being such an upstanding, God-fearing, loving woman. 
understanding it's not fear, but respect and honor. And she has been, in the time I've known her, honorable throughout her um, her children rearing, to her marriages, to this platform. Everything she does is with truth and transparency. And she works really hard in this community to bring the truth to her viewers. And I just pray a blessing, shalom blessing on her, that the struggles financially that she has and have, has had to this point will be eviscerated in Yeshua's mighty name. I pray you're, you will bless this channel. I know she wants to have a, a TV show that goes viral that you know, I would love to be on at some point, when, hint, hint, um, where she can uh, get back to, you know, music and entertainment and putting the spotlight on your artists that need a platform. And she can be uh, a foray and a leader in, in this part of the industry, because I, I know that you are breaking up the entertainment industry corruption like you are in every other vertical of the entirety of the world. Your truth will shine. You will not be mocked. And I pray that the people who listen to this will get peace in their spirit. As my brother Carl always says, where there is peace and calm and surety, there is the Lord. Where there's chaos and panic and tumult, there is the enemy. Your people now more than ever need something to hang their hat on with you. And that's what we're working to do in this platform, Lord, is to serve you, to bring your truth, to bring the light in a very dark place in a very dark time. Like uh, candles in a dark room, we will illuminate and people will say, why are you happy? Why are you at peace? Why do you have joy? And and more, as I said before in other shows, um, like the one I did last week with Francine and Alan, more than anything, Lord, um, this the, the wealth transfer, I believe, Lord, is a foray to the real issue, which is the saving of souls, getting people to know the gospel, getting people to know about your son. So when they ask us why we're doing well, why we're prospering, why we have peace and joy, why we're so calm in all this manufactured chaos that they do not know is man-made, the gods that people served in false idols of money and title and positions and their spouses and their address, all of that's going to get eviscerated. And the only thing will matter is were they with you? Did they embrace your son? Are they on the right side of history? And we're doing our level best, Lord, to help you know, cross that bridge. I love that Denise is about truth because nobody has it hundred percent. And it's not about being right. It's about crossing the finish line together. So help us Lord to interlock with your truth, to lock yes. arms with your people, get them over the finish line and help them to prosper so that they can do what you put on their hearts to do. You gave so many people here, different talents and skills to help one another not to fight each other, not to plot against each other, Lord. And that's what we want to do, honestly and earnestly. We don't have all the answers, but you do. We don't know the whole story, but you do. So, Lord, when you're ready, reveal your truth to your people, as you always do. And thank you for including us when you didn't have to in your ultimate sacrifice of your son to have this platform. And we, we pray with all our heart, might, soul, and strength that you are pleased with our offerings. You are pleased with our, our, uh, you know, our best um, yes. effort that we can muster for this time. In Yeshua's mighty name, we thank you and praise you. Shalom, shalom, thank shalom. You. Amen. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Don. And thank you for coming on again and sharing your knowledge and your heart. It. I always say that. Thank you. You are the best. If anybody's interested, um, I'm sorry, I know you didn't ask, but um, they can find us on Rumble. My name, John Dowling and Rumble. They can find us on YouTube, John Dowling in the real world. Yes. We, you're on my Telegram channel, same thing, where we put a lot of information every day at a very high level, fairly frequently. Uh, and then we uh, are also on BitChute and we're Chris and I are working right now in negotiations to discuss maybe doing a chat and also possibly, nice. we're not there yet, but we're talking about uh, coming back on X and doing a channel for a time just so we have more touch points for people to get the information out. Very good. And I'm going to put all those links in the description below too so people know how to find you. That's awesome. Thanks, Denise. Okay. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Good seeing you. And I'll talk to you soon. God bless. God bless you.